What's going on guys? Murder Inc. here back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today I would like to talk to you about Cillian the Lucky. He is the current fusion banner lord attack based legendary. Really cool model. He is in a reskin so that's really nice to see. I'm really loving the lance he's using. Let me give all the information you need to know. Determine whether or not you want to pursue this fusion. Go through the resources and what you need. I'm also going to go over the rares at the end of the video to see even if you are a free to play player if there's anyone that's really worth it. So without wasting any time let's get right into Cillian the Lucky. For his A1 we have attacks one enemy two times each hit has a 35% chance of placing a 30% decreased speed buff two turns. Each hit also has a 35% chance of stealing 30% of the target's current turn meter. Now, if you book this champion, you do get an additional 20% damage as well as 15% buff debuff chance, increasing the chance to 50% up from both of the 35% chance rates we see here now. For the A2, we have Inflict Misfortune. This is a four turn cooldown, and attacks one enemy, has an 85% chance of placing a block cooldown skills debuff for four turns, also has a 35% chance of placing the same block cooldown skills debuff on all other enemies for one turn. If you book this, you get 15% extra damage, an additional 15% debuff chance, and we can reduce its cooldown to three turns. So as we can see from the book value, not only do we have a reduced cooldown, we also have the debuff chance going from 85 to 100% as well as increasing the 35% chance to a 50% chance. For the A3, we have Headringer, attacks one enemy, has a 75% chance, placing a stun debuff for one turn, has a 25% chance of placing the stun debuff for two turns instead and stealing 50% of the target's current turn meter. Resets the cooldown of this skill if the target is killed. This is a five turn cooldown if you do elect to use legendary books on this champion you can increase the debuff chance by 25 percent increase the damage by 20 percent lower the cooldown by two turns making this another three turn cooldown or as passive we have places one of the following buffs on this champion for two turns at the start of each turn the buffs include a 50 percent increased attack 30 percent increased crit damage 30 percent increased crit rate 25 percent strength and buff as well as a block damage buff first impressions really cool kit i really like his passive the first thing that came to my mind was hello relentless gear how well can this work with that gear set if you do i mean 50 percent increase attack is a lot between all of these buffs you do have lots of cool options if you were to get relentless to proc and if you do have good relentless gear you can get the stats you need to build this champion so i'm just thinking right now out loud between killing a champion Reducing a cooldown, blocking the extra turn from Relentless, putting a block damage on yourself, increase attack. Obviously, this is an RNG passive. However, I still think he would be really cool with a set like Relentless. As far as an aura goes, he has increases LA attack in all battles by 25%. Now let's get into how I geared this champion. I put on three sets of Cruel Gear. Total stats are as follows. 24,000 health, 5,800 attack. 2400 defense, 139 speed, 98% crit rate, 270% crit damage, 180 accuracy, and 139 resistance. For mastery, I elected to go with a one-shot build. As you can see on the screen, I did go for a crit damage and one interesting talent I did look at the kit and decide to take is Master Hexer. I really like the interaction where it has a chance of spreading the black cooldown debuff and i thought that would be really cool if you can extend that from one turn to an additional turn making it two total turns i think that could be very strong in a setting like arena outside of that this is the typical one shot build mastery tree that chooses crit damage instead of helm smasher now the first place i would like to test him i think would be really cool let's see how he does as a farming champion and what his skills do on auto this will also give us a nice view on his kit, what his animations look like, so on and so forth. So I'm going to put this on auto one time. We have a pretty basic A1 there, as we can see there. 94,000, really hard hitting champ right off the bat. So it's good to see that he does have high multipliers. Once again, we can just see the damage ramping up, 116,000. 
another block damage there we had 183,000. now let's go ahead and use this a3 head ringer so that does 121,000. the enemy is going to take their turn here obviously we saw his speed was very low so let's hit them with the a1 see what that does this is a two hit so 27,000 isn't bad enough to one shot brutal 12 3. so as we can see by killing the targets we are resetting the cooldown on his a3 so that's another really cool thing as far as farming goes let's get back into using head ringer again 102,000. and i'm pretty sure the hard hitting ability we saw was inflict misfortune which is the a2 correct now let's throw this on auto in two times and watch him go 101,000. Eighty-seven, hundred and fifteen, hundred and nineteen to finish it off. So, if you did want to use this champion as a farmer, he's absolutely viable. It could have just been the luck of the draw here, but I did notice, as I'm sure you did, block damage was very common in proking from the passive. Overall, multipliers are really good. Really excited to see it. There's nothing too fancy about his animations, which I am personally kind of disappointed on. I think. They made his champion model look so cool that they definitely could have added something cool to his animations. But overall, multipliers look high, keeping in mind that he isn't booked right now. So only more damage can be added on top of this. Another way we tested him in campaign run, let's go right ahead and take him into a Dragon 20 run. The team I'm going to use with him is a Royal Guard as leader for the 35% increased attack. Arbiter, Dracomor for the debuffs, and of course, Cillian. So let's set this up really quick with the attack up first. Let's debuff everybody. Let's just burn Royal Guards A3. Now let's hit, let's first go ahead and use the A2 and see how much damage we can do to this Apothecary in Dragon 20. So we hit there for 183,000 damage. Now let's cycle through these abilities really quickly. Throw this back on two times. Let's boost the turn meter so he doesn't die. Now let's use the A3 ability on the sniper in the corner here. The hit for 100k. Now let's cycle through again to see if we can, in fact, boost his turn meter to go ahead of Tyrell. And it did. And once again, as we saw here, now he has a strengthen and a block damage. Really cool to see. And as mentioned before, he did reset his A3, so that's a really awesome move since it does place a stun. Granted, you're not getting the stun effect if you are killing the target, so there's not a ton to work with here as far as getting you set of stunning people over and over and over again. As I first considered when I did read this, the reset is conditional upon killing the target. Let's go ahead and see what the A1 double hit has to do against a defense down and weakened target. So 30,000 each. Now let's put this on auto and watch him in action. Going against a fresh wave. There we have 159,000 from this guy. So like I said from campaign, this guy's doing major damage. 172,000. He is single target, so that does take away his value a bit. But as I've gone over in the past with champions, he absolutely has the potential to you in progression wise if you are early mid game even the beginning of end game if you're struggling with someone like a horden in the waves and the dragon 20 you can insert Cillian in here and he can just be used as the one shot and he can pick and choose which target he decides to take out and not take out now that we saw him in the dragon let's go right ahead and take him for a spin in the ice golem 20. As we can see here, no one can really resist getting one shot by this champion, whether it's his A2 or his A3. We are using a Santa lead, a Draco Morph, Arbiter, and Cillian. I'm really interested to see how his passive is going to work against this next wave here with the Reflect Damage buff. We do have Santa putting Unkillable on, so he does seem to be safe for now. As we saw there, huge number 202,000 that's my biggest attraction to the game seeing giant numbers like that obviously draco here is just flexing surplus damage hit of 700,000 
but it's still nice to see a fusion like this that just does a ton of raw damage. So now we'll be able to see him start going after the adds here, 156,000. There we had the A1 for 75 and 67,000 each. So to me, this seems like he does have benefits to his kit with the block cooldown and stun. His passive is extremely unique. I think it could be very rewarding. As mentioned before, there's a lot of RNG to it. You could really be hoping for a block damage buff, especially in a dungeon like this that has high output damage from the Ice Golem. But I still think he can be an absolute asset in a dungeon like this. There are another 200,000 hit. I think it was really cool that they added a strengthen to his passive bonus. As I've talked about with Whirlin before, strengthen is probably the best defensive buff in the game right now. Unfortunately, that 1 million surplus damage elected not to proc on the Ice Golem, which definitely would have one-shot him. So overall, we have Santa, who did 700,000, Draco Morph, who did 1.7, Cillian the Lucky, who pulled out a 1.3, compared to a Draco Morph, that is a ton of damage. So this guy can absolutely compete with someone as dominant as Draco Morph with their surplus damage. We have Arbiter coming in at 167,000, and the second Draco Morph at 1.6 million. Obviously, this does not take into consideration any overkill damage done. So this is kind of just to scale things. And I think they did a good job by patching this. Or else we would see ridiculous numbers like 7 million, 8 million from Draco. And even Cillian would be closer to 4 or 5 million. Even if they elected to show the over damage. Alright, so now that we have seen what Cillian can do in campaign and dungeons, let's take him for a test run in the arena. Alright, here we have an Arbiter, Ceres... Cillian and Lanakis team, and I'm currently fighting a Coronar, Ghostborn, Lissandra, and Royal Huntsman. Start off with Arbiter, boosting the team. Now let's get some A1 damage on Coronar, since he could be a threat potentially. Alright, so he absolutely just decimated the target. He just hit him twice on his A1 for 31,000 with no buffs on. Let's toss a defense down and weaken see what we can do against these guys let's turn meter boost again we'll start with this a2 against royal huntsman to really neutralize the threat because he's the only one who can one shot someone on our team so there we have it 175,000 in the arena very high number very few champions that can do that cycling through let's get back and hit the lissandra with an a3 now 163,000. now we can throw this on auto see if Cillian gets one last turn doesn't look like it, but still, he absolutely stole the show. He has proven once again that he is just a monster damage dealer. Now let's put Cillian to the test and see what he can do against the current meta, which is Sifi and Rodo's pair. Start off by turn meter boosting. We'll have Lanakis hit Lissandra with the ally attack. Now let's go for the fear on Sifi. Didn't work. However, we did lower the turn meter, which was great. Now we will have a chance to spread black cooldown skills on everybody. Easy one shot, 57,000. Let's increase the turn meter again. We will go fishing for an extra turn here. We did get it. Now let's hit a rel. Now they get their turn. Let's cycle through some A1s so we can get... Our friend, Cillian the Lucky. Can he two hit a Rhodos? I believe he can. All right, perfect. So he is definitely capable if you can get him to go first in your team. Let me throw this on auto. Two counter Rhodos. Obviously there are lots of conditions that weigh into it. He can't use his A2 or his A3 if he wants to do this. You can see one hit will not work with Rhodos passive. However, if you do plan on using him and you want to Go after the enemy team's Rotos. Absolutely use the A1. Granted, you built enough damage, and he does have enough to two hit Rotos to Lost Groom. All right, guys, now I want to give you my final thoughts on the champion, Cillian the Lucky. I think he's a great champion, definitely worthy of a fusion, in my opinion. 
His raw damage is absolutely incredible, as I've shown you already in this video. Granted, not everyone is going to have access to put him in the level of gear that he is in now. However, I did want to showcase the upper end of his damage. He is currently not booked in this video, so there is obviously more damage he can be doing. So I would have to say his benefits are you can use him as a farmer. He probably won't be very quick for you, but he can absolutely pull out sub 15 second 12-3 run and brutal. In dungeons, he can be a very powerful one-shot tool if you are struggling on a particular wave and progression. He is magic affinity, so you would have to be careful on a force dungeon. However, with this passive due to block damage, he does have increased chances of survivability. So this absolutely gives him an added bonus to his kit as far as being able to build him like a glass cannon and banking on his passive to save his life. Now getting to the last place we tested him, Arena, I think he can be an asset in Arena. There is definitely a possibility of an alternate build to Cillian. I noticed it when I was first reading over this champion. It would have to be accuracy based, even potential to take the defensive tree in the masteries, making him a bit tankier while he still would deal damage since his multipliers are very high. He has a stun, a chance to spread a block cooldown, which can be an absolute nuisance of a debuff to put on an entire team, as well as a chance to counterattack and deliver a decreased speed debuff on any target that hits him. So he can definitely be a threat in that sense. You can build him tankier, maybe even geared towards Platinum Arena. It doesn't look like he needs a lot of damage to be able to one-shot a Rodos, so it's very possible that some of this CC accuracy based gear sets will be the way to build him. You do plan on using him platinum. Now let's go over the epics of the fusion in case you do not need Cillian the Lucky. First one would be Necro Hunter. Necro Hunter has 98 base speed. So that was my focus in point on where is this strong from just looking at it. 98 speed is a rather high base speed on average. So that is one benefit he has. He does offer a decreased defense on a two hit. His A2 is Gravestorm, has a 50% chance of attacking all enemies with an extra hit. So this is 50-50. Once you book him, it can be a three-turn cooldown. This does have some potential of helping you in wave clear, but overall, I don't think it's a particularly strong skill. Now we have his A3, attacks one enemy. This is a perfect veil buff on this champion for two turns if this attack is critical. Now to me, I don't know the multiplier of this. This could hit very hard. I'm not sure, but... This to me isn't a very impactful skill. So overall, I don't think this is one of the champions. If you are free to play or if after watching this video can't see any use to getting Cillian, I don't think this is one of the epics that will help you out. Moving on to the next epic on the list, Corpse Collector. As mentioned before, the speed here is outstanding to see. 106 base speed. That is absolutely monstrous. So let's see what this champion does. For A1, Insidious Parasite attacks one enemy, has a 40% chance of placing a Leech debuff for two turns. Leech isn't a gigantic debuff, but it can definitely add up, especially if you're early game. The A2, Hailfire attacks all enemies, has a 75% chance of placing a 100% heal reduction debuff and a 50% decrease accuracy debuff on all enemies for two turns. These two specific debuffs are weighted rather low on how beneficial they are to a team, so... I don't think the A1 or A2 so far has shown a lot of promise as far as a kit goes. A3 Noxious Escape attacks three times at random. Each hit has a 75% chance of placing a 5% poison debuff for two turns. Places a Veil buff on this champion for one turn. So this can be reduced to a four turn cooldown, 100% chance of placing three 5% poisons. So right off the bat, you can see anything that can apply multiple poisons to a single target can be very strong for clan boss so this is an option for you i don't think she would outperform kale personally but due to her high speed she can definitely be an off poisoner and definitely apply some support there if you are a new player and you are looking for someone else to round off your team the third epic in the fusion is suai firstborn her a1 render helpless attacks one enemy has a 45% chance of placing a black buff debuff for two turns, places a 50% increase attack buff and a 30% increase crit rate buff on this champion for two turns if this attack kills an enemy. This is a decent A1 overall. There isn't a ton of benefit, but still you do get a debuff and buff action going on from the A1. 
obviously with the condition of killing an enemy. Attacks one enemy, attacks all enemies with a second hit if this attack is critical. So right off the bat, if you build her with 100% crit, you are hitting once and then offering an AoE after. The only problem with this is this hit deals 60% of the damage inflicted from the first hit. That part isn't as bad. Obviously, it's going to be a weaker hit since it is AoE. The real problem is this attack will always be a normal hit, meaning cannot be a critical hit. The A3 Deedon reaction attacks one enemy before attacking has a 50% chance of placing a 25% weakened debuff for two turns. Once booked, this can be a four turn cooldown and increase the percent chance to 75. Overall, I don't think she offers a ton of value. If you do need a weaken for any aspect of the game, if you do have cold hearts, royal guards, trying to progress through spider, you can use her as a weaken option to go straight after the spider boss. Since she is a void champion, she doesn't have any chance to have a weak hit. So given enough accuracy and obviously with the overall RNG chance of resisting or not resisting an attack, you can absolutely use her to place that weakened debuff on the spider boss. Now let's get into the last epic of this fusion. This is a very old champion and in my opinion, this is absolutely a champion to go for if you are new to this game. He can be extremely beneficial, especially in arena, and let me explain why. He has an increased ally speed in the arena by 24%. This can be very big if you're early game or mid game, and you're still struggling to get a speed aura for your arena team. On top of having 101 base speed, which is a lot higher than average, his A1 attacks one enemy two times, has a 40% chance of placing a 30% decrease speed for two turns if the attack is critical. So once again, you want to build him with 100% crit rate and you have an awesome kit at your disposal. Outside of his A1, there's a lot of potential with his A2 here. Attacks one enemy, has a 90% chance of placing a freeze debuff on all enemies for one turn if this attack kills the enemy. So this can be a three turn cooldown and be increased to 100% chance to freeze based on your accuracy if you kill an enemy target. So we have an A3 here also based on critical hitting the target if he does get a crit on the champions he decreases their turn meters by 20 percent and also fills his turn meter by 10 percent so as stated before if you did have to pick one epic to go for and you wanted to avoid going for Cillian, jingle hunter is absolutely the pick for you all right guys as always thanks a ton for watching thank you guys so much for your support i would like to thank my clanmate plutonium for letting me use his account after he instantly fused this guy put some monster gear on him so thank you so much i appreciate that what i want to know from you guys is how are you going to use Cillian the lucky if you do decide to fuse him hopefully if you're not going to fuse him you still consider going after jingle hunter if you don't already have it if you are an early to mid game player let me know what you think about this fusion guide this is the first fusion guide per se that i've done on top of a champion spotlight i thought it was important to go over the epics as well as the legendary champion since i feel like they're both key talking points in this whole process of a fusion to see if it's worth it for you the next video i'm going to release is a champion spotlight of hegemon i was lucky enough yesterday to actually pull a second hegemon so for my hegemon spotlight video i am going to be using two it should be a ton of fun to show you guys the different builds i have for the hegemons and where we can use them outside of arena because it hasn't really been covered yet as always guys thanks a bunch make sure you like subscribe and comment if you like this content and until next time peace out